Lagos, the nation's commercial capital. This is the News at 10. Live from Channels Television. Reporting tonight, Millicent Walker. Tonight, anxiety mounts as fuel queues build up in Lagos and Abuja. The Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority confirms petrol with methanol above specification is in supply chain. Aviation union workers suspend planned industrial action following an agreement reached with the federal government after over five hours of dialogue in Abuja. Inspector General Police announces the review of the Nigerian Police Force vision to align it with current internal security challenges. And prosecutors in Burkina Faso seek 30-year jail term for the nation's former president, Blaise Campore, for his alleged complicity in the murder of his predecessor, Thomas Sankara. Plus other international news from our studio in London. On business news tonight, Nigerian Insurance Association says over 11 billion naira has so far been paid as business insurance claims for losses suffered during the NSARS protest in 2020. On sports news tonight, the Nigerian Football Federation picks March the 27th for the 2022 FIFA World Cup playoff return leg clash between the Super Eagles and the Black Stars of Ghana in Abuja. And from the nation's capital, three Nigerians received the 2020-2021 Nigerian National Order of Merit Award for their exceptional feat in the fields of science and technology. Long while now, long queues at petrol stations in Lagos were non-existent, but many residents woke up today to the sights of many vehicles lining up at various filling stations across the metropolis as motorists scrambled to buy fuel. It was observed that petrol stations that opened sold limited quantity, while some others refused to dispense the product to motorists. Before now, residents of the federal capital territory, Abuja, had been battling a similar situation. Our energy correspondent, Elu Phillips, reports. Quite an unusual sight, last seen in the first quarter of 2021. Lagos residents woke up to have a taste of what has been on for some days in Abuja. Queues and frenetic efforts to buy petrol. The story, however, is not the same across Lagos metropolis. So while some fuel stations have lines of vehicles waiting to be filled, at other locations, it's as good as a regular day. Drive in and be filled. Of course, situations like this aggravate motorists who hate to recall experiences of the past. What I think is probably because of the oil, uh, the subsidy, the government said they will they would not remove immediately. That was what caused the those uh, the oil marketers to now be holding fuel for the masses. And I think this is not right at this time. Nobody's addressing no formal statement from anybody. We just cannot get full. We cannot go about to our daily activities. I'm supposed to be at work right now. I cannot work. I have to look for fuel up and down. The situation which has gone unabated cause for concerns as some motorists ask the relevant authorities to address the situation. For now, all eyes are on the regulatory agencies in the downstream sector. Olu Phillips, Channel Television News. Meanwhile, the federal government says it has identified and subsequently dealt with what may have caused panic buying of petrol in some parts of Lagos and Abuja. Responding to the resurgence of few queues, the chief executive officer of the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Agency, Mr. Farouk Ahmed, says methanol quantity above Nigeria's specification was discovered in a supply chain which has since been isolated. According to him, while the quality control agencies of the government are working, the NNPC Limited and oil marketers have been directed to ensure robust supply of petrol. The Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority wishes to inform the general public that limited quantity of petroleum 
product PMS, commonly known as petrol, with methanol quantity above Nigerian specification, was discovered in the supply chain. Methanol is regular; it's a regular additive in petrol, and usually blended to ac acceptable quantity. To ensure vehicular and, equ and uh, equipment safety, the limited quantity of the impacted products has been isolated and withdrawn from the market, including those loaded in trucks. Our technical team, in conjunction with NMPC and other industry stakeholders, will continue to monitor and ensure quality products are adequately, supply, adequately supplied and distributed nationwide. So there is no need to panic. The source supplier has been identified and further commercial and appropriate actions shall be taken by the authority as well as the NMPC. The NMPC Limited and all oil marketing companies have been directed by the authority to sustain sufficient distribution of petroleum products in all retail outlets nationwide to avoid any uh, scarcity. Meanwhile, the NMPC has intensified effort at increasing the supply of petroleum products into the market in order to bridge any unforeseen supply gap. And to union-related issues, the industrial action set to begin today has been shelved by aviation unions following an agreement reached with the federal government. Reviewed conditions of service, COS, for some aviation agencies is at the heart of the planned industrial action. At the meeting between the union leaders, the Minister of Aviation, the Minister of Labour, it was agreed that by March the 31st, the Minister of Aviation must ensure the approval, release and implementation of the review cost for all the workers and the agencies under the Aviation Ministry. On February the 2nd, aviation unions issued an ultimatum to the Federal Ministry of Aviation and aviation agencies of a failure to release negotiated reviewed conditions of service, COS, since 2013 or face an industrial action today, the 8th of February. We also agree that the of aviation is it uh, circulates the circular on this consequential minimum wage to all our agencies uh, and ask them to compute the consequential adjustment without any further delay. And uh, in doing so, they have to clarify to them that uh, the minimum wage took effect from 18th of April 2019 and the consequential adjustments done same year in October took a retroactive uh, effect without a uh, change of February. Therefore, this entails that everybody will get arrears, including those who have resisted the system, who are retired, uh, or gone on um, voluntary retirement, or were resisted from the system in one circumstance or the other. The seven days ultimatum issued for a planned industrial action effective this morning of 8 February 2022 is hereby suspended. And to security, the Nigerian police says it is reviewing its vision and reevaluating its strategies to align it with current internal security realities. This is according to the Inspector General of Police, Usman Al Kali Baba, who was speaking at the opening ceremony of the annual police conference and retreat for senior officers in Uyo, the Akwaibum State Capital. He emphasizes the need for a new police reform and an initiative that will work with a new vision, mission, and strategy for the force. It's the second edition of the retreat and conference for senior police officers from all commands and formations across the country, an initiative of the Inspector General of Police, Usman Al Kalibaba. Integration of cutting edge technology and intelligence led policing model to our operational and investigation functions with a view to strengthening our capacity to stabilize the internal security order, discourage pre-trial detention and restore public confidence in the force. 
Declaring the event open, the Minister of Police Affairs, Mohamed Dinyadi, who represented the President, said the current police reforms will reposition the force for better performance. No government has shown so much commitment to the welfare and the institutional advancement of the Nigerian police than the current government of President Muhammad Buhari. How can you look at the most sensitive security agency in the land in, in, the, in the year preceding to an election? And it is this 2022 that you can do all the preparations for the transition from one government to another government. And you cut down their overhead and you are trying to justify doing that, I think it's not acceptable. If what we are doing here is exactly what we want to achieve in having the most effective, efficient police in the country. The governor of Ikiti State, Kaede Fayemi, and the host, Governor Udom Emanuel, acknowledged the age-long partnership between governors and the police, assuring them of more support. We want to reassure the Inspector General of Police that we will continue to stand with and by him in accomplishing the task that he has set for himself, particularly around ethical regeneration in policing and a human rights-driven uh, police uh, force using intelligence, guidance in the most effective manner that is available. Let me also say here that I've always been an advocate for a robust redeployment of intelligence apparatus, both human and electronic. And I'm glad that this approach appears to have taken ascendance among other items in crime fighting toolbox of the security agencies. With that intelligence, we might not be able to do a whole lot. And with the theme, the new vision, a roadmap for stabilizing internal security, the retreat provides an opportunity for participants to reposition themselves for better performance. And now to the judiciary. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanka Mohammed, has reacted to the claim of the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, that the judiciary be held responsible for delays in the trial and delivery of judgments on corruption cases involving politically exposed individuals. In a statement by his senior special assistant on media, Ahuraka Yusufisa, the CGN explains that the judiciary, by its constitutional position, does not have criminal investigation units or fraud detective squad to detect and investigate criminal involvement of any person, neither does it have the capacity to enforce its orders and decisions. According to him, more often than not, the federal government's prosecution sector files more charges than it can prove or provide witnesses to prove ostensibly at times for the prosecution to even fail. On the issue of budgetary secrecy, the CGN says that each court and judicial body units that award contracts on expenditure above the approval limits of the accounting officers of the courts and judicial bodies. He adds, the administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 is infected with sores of some parts, making speeding adjudications improbable um, in some instances, in addition to high volume of cases, limited number of judges, poor infrastructure or a cake equipment. He explains further that while the Nigerian judiciary is not laying claims to being a perfect institution and the political and economic conditions under which it is operating is compared with its counterparts in other climes, it would be adjudged a prized model. Meanwhile, a federal high court sitting in Port Harcourt River State has asked the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to stop further action against the former governor of Imo State, Senator Rochas Okrocha, until the determination of the case before it. Senator Okrocha had, through his lawyer, senior advocate of Nigeria, Ola Olanikpekon, approached the federal high court presided over by Justice Stephen Pam, seeking the enforcement of some orders earlier made in its favor in a case between him and the Antigraft Agency. 
At the resumption of proceedings today, Mr. Lani Kwekun says he returned to the same court to seek the protection of the rights of his clients because the anti graft agency has refused to obey any of the orders earlier made. He said instead the EFCC preferred fresh charges against his clients based on the same investigation which the court invalidated on the 6th of December 2021. But counsel to the EFCC denied that the anti graft agency went contrary to the judgment of the court and pleaded for time to respond to the processes. Before adjourning the case to February 14, Judge Pam warned that he would not tolerate contempt of court. In part two, after the break, Chairman of Code of Conduct Tribunal, Dan Ladi Umar, to know his fate on April 26 in the case of alleged assaults against him. Please stay with us. Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channels Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Anxiety mounts as fuel queues build up in Lagos and Abuja. The Nigerian midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory authority confirms petrol with methanol above specification is in supply chain. Aviation union workers suspend planned industrial action following an agreement reached with the federal government after over five hours of dialogue in Abuja. Inspector General of Police announces a review of the Nigerian police force vision to align it with current internal security challenges. And prosecutors in Burkina Faso seek 30-year jail term for the nation's former president, Bayes Campore, for his alleged complicity in the murder of his predecessor, Thomas Sankara. And a consultant's pathologist with the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Lassus, Dr. Sunday Shoyemi, has sought the coroner inquest into the controversial death of the Darwin College student, Sylvester Romani, that a blackish substance was found in the boy's intestine during autopsy. While answering questions under cross-examination from counsel to the Romani family, senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, says that Dr. Shoemi, however, testified that no test was carried out to determine what the blackish substance was, as Lassuth had no toxicology laboratory to conduct the test. And the Nigerian Union of Teachers is asking the federal government to address the challenges of insecurity, poor remuneration for teachers, among other welfare issues affecting the teaching profession. The union organized a solemn assembly in Abuja to pray for the country and for God to intervene in the problems affecting the education sector. At the meeting, the president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Comrade Ayuba Waba, says the NLC is putting together a workers' charter of demands that will drive the engagement between the union and politicians ahead of the 2023 general elections. Our correspondents and Paris Simon report. So Annually, teachers across Nigeria gather in the nation's capital, Abuja, for a solemn assembly to pray and commit their activities for the year unto God. According to the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, in 2021 alone, 20 schools were attacked in Nigeria with more than 1,400 children abducted and 16 others killed. And this is a source of concern for the Nigerian Union of Teachers. This unfortunate development has led to the deaths of our members, students and pupils, as well as the destruction of school, colleges and other educational centers. Currently, the number of school children, students and teachers who are still held in captivity by the enemies of Nigeria and education in particular are growing by the day. The president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Comrade Ayuba Waba, who is in attendance, calls on the federal government to fulfill its promises to teachers as it discloses plans to launch a charter of demands for the engagement of politicians ahead of the 2023 general elections. I want to call on the federal government all the promises that have been made 
for the teachers, including the retirement age, including a new salary package, I think is something that is doable. Very soon, we are going to launch the workers' charter of the man to engage our political elites as we go into the political dispensation. There are about 10. And it may interest you to know that the first item on that charter of the man has to do with education and teachers. <laughs> that teachers' welfare must be given the proper place. The teachers here look forward to an improved welfare and safe working environment in the year 2022. And hopefully, this will motivate them to be more productive in their places of work. This solemn assembly is expected to raise the consciousness on the part of the government and all the stakeholders involved in the education sector to raise the bar and ensure security and other challenges confronting the sector are addressed. Emperor Simon, Channels Television News. We're back in the courtroom. A federal high court in Abuja has fixed April 26 for judgment in a suit instituted against the Senate by the Chairman Code of Conduct Tribunal, Dan Ladi Umar, seeking to stop the upper chamber from probing him on an alleged public misconduct. Justice Yang Eko fixed the date after Mr. Dan Ladi and four defendants in the matter adopted their final processes. The four defendants in the matter are the Senate, President of Senate, Senate Committee on Ethics, Privileges and Public Petitions, and the Attorney General of the Federation. The CCT chairman is challenging, among others, the powers of the Senate to investigate him in an alleged assault perpetrated against the security guard at Bannex Plaza in the nation's capital. And off to Abuja we go, as Terry Kumi has some more stories there. Hello, Terry. Hello, Millicent. Three Nigerians who have distinguished themselves in the field of science and technology have been conferred with the 2020-2021 Nigerian National Order of Merit Award. Honoring the recipients, President Muhammad Buhari states that Nigeria would continue to recognize and celebrate scholarly achievements as Nigeria's collective future rests on active participation in science and technology. The recipients derived from a selection of 1,200 nominations received a cash reward of 10 million naira each. Our State House correspondent Gloria Omezuike reports. After nearly two years since the last Nigerian National Order of Merit Awards, owing to the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic, President Mohamed Buhari confers the award on three Nigerians. <laughs> 2020 recipient and world-renowned surgeon, Dr. Oluyinka Olurotimi Olutoye, recipient of the 2020 Nigerian National Order of Merit Posthumous Award for Science, Professor Charles Ejiki Chidumi, and a professor of mathematical physics, Professor Godwin Samuel Ekagwiri, received the 2021 NNOM Award for Science at the State House. <laughs> President Buhari welcomes the new laureates with a sense of pride in their contributions to science and technology, a field he illuminates as the hallmark of the future. Please endeavor at all times to serve as beacons of hope and aspirations for the younger generation of Nigerians, reminding them that our survival and collective future as a nation ultimately rests on our being active participants in global developmental efforts, especially in science and technology. 79 recipients are in receipt of the coveted Nigerian National Order of Merit Award since its establishment 43 years ago. I enjoin all our youth to emulate your good works by dedicating themselves to excellence and strive to contribute their quota to the arduous task of getting Nigeria on the top bracket of outstanding nations. The three new laureates were derived from a selection of 1,200 nominations from the NNOM Awards for 2020 and 2021. 
So, quintessentially, expectations are high, both for the awardees and the NNOM. It is for this reason that the president is promising to scale up budgetary allocation to the NNOM, even though we do not know at what magnitude. But it is essentially to keep up with the noble and credible selection process of the Nigerian National Order of Merit Award. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. Now to politics. No voting will take place in 593 polling units when the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, conducts the Federal Capital Territory Area Council elections on Saturday. This is according to the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakub, who told journalists at a meeting with key players in the forthcoming elections in Abuja that the affected polling units have no registered voters. The empty polling units are part of the 2,260 new polling units established by INEC. It is four days to the Federal Capital Territory Area Council elections, and the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is holding a final consultative meeting with stakeholders in Abuja. Attending this meeting are traditional rulers, members of the civil society organizations, and other pressure groups. The INEC chairman informs the gathering about polling units where elections will not be conducted on Saturday owing to the lack of voters. There are 593 polling units in the FCT without registered voters. 1,328 polling units with between 1 and 50 voters. The commission has decided that no election will take place at the polling units without registered voters. There will be no miracle polling units in the FCT. Also addressed at the meeting are concerns about the functionality of the BVAS machine, which will be deployed on Saturday, as well as the need for a peaceful exercise. Nigerians expect three things will happen on Saturday. One, that INEC will deploy its personnel and materials early, that the polling stations should open early, that we will not have challenges with the BVAS, with the accreditation of voters. Whatever challenge with technology falls within the remit of INEC, and INEC can address that particular concern. I employ all youth and leaders to shun violence. When I see people carrying stick, you stick your voter's card. Carrying stick, running helter skelter. So where are you running to? There must be life after election. You don't die because you didn't win. Meanwhile, the FCT youth representatives appeal to their members to resist the temptation to be used for violence on election day. Stakeholders, political stakeholders, desperate people who want to be in power must think of the security and the future of the FCT. 473 candidates from 14 political parties are contesting in the Saturday Area Council elections. 363 of these contestants want to fill the 62 councillorship positions in the six area councils, making it the most contested elections in the FCT in recent times. Now, a society in which many consider themselves alienated from legal institutions or perceive them to be incapable of delivering justice for all cannot be stable and prosperous. These are the words of the Vice President, Professor Yemi Shibaju, during the 53rd Conference of the Association of Law Teachers held at the Bayero University in Kano State. Calling on players and the legal profession to maintain its integrity and ethos, the Vice President says all law teachers and legal practitioners are custodians of the truth. However, democracy cannot endure without social justice. The pursuit of justice lies at the heart of the quest for the good of society. On democracy, Professor Shimbajo says its success is hinged on the nation's ability to reduce the basic problems of ill health, malnutrition, illiteracy and famine, which daily afflict the people. After attending the conference, the vice president paid a condolence visit to the family of the kidnapped and murdered Kano pupil, Hanifa Abubakar. Well, still in politics, as the clock ticks towards the 2023 general elections, various political groups have continued to surface with activities geared towards building a better Nigeria. One of the latest is the We Together movement, which has been launched in Kano State. Young entrepreneurs, community leaders, heads of student unions, politicians and religious leaders gathered to say they also count in the scheme of things in the country. All the honor and glory, 
A pledge to serve Nigeria sounding loud and clear from these Nigerian youths who have decided to come together with a common goal to make Nigeria a better place. They have decided to push this agenda by launching the We Together movement in Kano. And in attendance are young businessmen and women, heads of youth groups and politicians who are determined to change the narrative for a more united and prosperous country. Because if you create a prosperous Nigeria, you are going to create a prosperous Africa. Before you can get a prosperous Africa, you must have to have a peaceful Africa. And if you want to have a peaceful Africa, you have to have a peaceful Nigeria. There is no politician that is going to fix this country for you. You in your community, mothers, hear me, you with your child, men, please, when you're getting married, hear me, you as a father will be the one to look at the We Together values. The time is now, they say, for the Nigerian youth to become a force that must be reckoned with on the political scene. The, the, the politics of God virus, so that age and everyone of you have an opportunity to be what you need. The young people of Nigeria occupy some of the five percent of our population. We are the workforce, you know, of this country. I think our leaders should give us that opportunity for us to do it ourselves. In doing this, the women folk must be carried along. Aisha Aminu, a member of the We Together movement, thinks women have been undermined for too long. We call ourselves the giant of Africa, but if you look at the statistics in Nigeria, they're appalling. We have a 6.7 representative rate for both elective and appointive positions, when the global average is 23.5, and African average is about 22.5. So any way you look at it, Nigeria is lagging way, way behind. It's a call to action ahead of the 2023 general elections and beyond. So the call to action is for Nigerian youth to, to, to come together, put aside their differences, you know, whatever it is you are doing, promote one another, help one another. The We Together movement says it's come to stay, and members hope to build a manifesto from the ward level and consult with stakeholders up to the national level to have an all-inclusive government in the coming years. So the National Assembly now where a bill to alter the constitution to review the required educational qualification into some political officers has scaled second reading in the House of Representatives. The bill sponsored by Representative Orio Mio Nanuga seeks to establish a minimum of university degree as requirements for some elective officers, including the office of the president. It's the first plenary session of the week in the Green Chamber. Representative Orio Mio Nanuga is concerned about the quality of political office holders and has sponsored a bill for an upward review of the educational qualification requirement for certain political offices, including that of the president. The state legislators are important for making laws to govern the state in the interest of the people. The office of the governor is the highest political office in the state. The federal legislators are important for making laws in the interest of the nation. The office of the president is the highest political office in the land. If a managing director who holds an equally strategic position in a company within this country cannot be employed without a university degree or its equivalent, why should the above political offices be held by people without a university degree or its equivalent? The bill is not debated and lawmakers vote in support of it as it scales second reading. In the meantime, the lawmakers are concerned about online advertising and sales of drugs. They are worried that most drugs and related products advertised online do not meet the standards set by the law and exposes the public to health risks and possibly death. A way that given the force exaggerated media and online advertisement of drugs, members of the public are enticed into buying the drugs ranging from dietary supplement, cholesterol-lowering medicine, and analgesics and sex enhancement drugs, some of which are unregistered and purchased without a doctor's prescription or the advice of a pharmacist. Meanwhile, like the Senate, the House considers and adopts a bill to address sexual harassment in tertiary no, 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 institutions. 
The bill seeks to promote ethical standards in tertiary institutions, as well as protect students against sexual harassment by educators in tertiary institutions. The bill also proposes up to 14 years jail term for offenders. Well, that's all from the nation's capital. Back to you, Millicent. Thank you, Terry. We're staying in the National Assembly. In the upper chamber, a federal lawmaker, Senator George Sekibo, is calling on the president of Senate, Ahmed Lawan, to declare vacant the seat occupied by the former deputy minority leader, Emmanuel Boacha. At the resumption of plenary session for the week, Senator Boacha rose to inform the Senate of his decision to leave the PDP for the APC because of the division in the PDP in Taraba State, besides other reasons. Our correspondent, Linda Akibwe, reports. The 2023 general election is just a year away, and a common scenario in Nigerian politics during political season is a prevalence of politicians abandoning their parties to form alliances with other political parties. True to form, federal legislators have been exiting their parties for greener pastures in other political parties. Recently, some federal lawmakers have jumped ship from their position PDP to the ruling APC, namely Senator Stella Odua, Senator Lawal Anka, Hassan Gusso, Sahabi Yao, Peter Mwaboshi, and Elisha Abu. Last Thursday, the deputy minority leader, Senator Emmanuel Bacha, decamped from the opposition PDP to the ruling APC. He explains the reason for his decision during Tuesday's plenary session. I announce henceforth my exit from the People's Democratic Party and to join the governing party because of visible presence of the party in my senatorial district. Mr. President, I say I have opportunity to breathe freely because of a deliberate isolation and huge divisions in the party in my state. Senator Boacha's defection brings the number of APC senators to 70, while the PDP has 38 senators and the Young Progressives Party, YPP, has won. But his colleague in the PDP believes there should be consequences for his defection. Mr. President, the law is clear. A member elected on the platform of a political party retains his seat until the end of that tenure, ex except there is a division of, in that political party or there is a merger. And that is what the provision says. And it's well for that to say such, such evidences must be brought to the House. This letter signed by your national chairman. This letter says the PDP Senate caucus has duly informed the national headquarters of the party and it's like the national headquarters has accepted and already nominated somebody to replace the, uh, the Sungwe senator who has moved to APC. Historically, it's rare to see a Senate president or a Speaker of the House of Representatives declare a seat vacant on account of a lawmaker defecting to another political party. And there is no indication that this will change. Linda Kibi, Channels Television News. Into health. The Abia state government has laid the foundation stone for the Abba Health Village to cater for the health needs of residents across Abia South Senatorial District. According to Governor Okezi Ikpazu, this is a key project that would include kidney and heart centers, doctor suites, ultra modern laboratories, mother and child hospital, and other facilities. He also inspected other ongoing projects located within the Abba General Hospital with the assurance that they will all be completed soon. These three projects, the specialist hospital, the kidney and heart center, as well as the doctor's suites, will progress simultaneously and I expect that I will return here in exactly five months to commission this project. Within this week, 80% of what the contractors need to do the work will be provided by the special grace of God. But the good news, 
like I say always, is that the hood does not make the mom. Just like the building does not make a hospital. This government is spending about a billion naira to procure equipment for these centers that we are building here. For me, this will be the end of our quest for world-class Medicare outside the shores of Aba and Abia State. And micro, small and medium enterprises globally serve as a catalyst for economic development and national growth. This is the opinion of professionals during a one-day interactive session between entrepreneurs and officials of Sweden to discuss ways of creating an enabling environment for businesses to prosper. According to participants, the focus of engagement will help protect entrepreneurs from unknown business risks via training and guidance from seasoned coaches. It is the maiden edition of the networking seminar targeting business development professionals and micro, small and medium scale enterprises in Nigeria to drive the value chain for entrepreneurs. With the emergence of MSMEs in Nigeria and its impact on the national economy, government is beginning to identify with activities of entrepreneurs. The director of Enterprise Development Center sets the tone for this first meeting. There are many issues which we could not measure or quantify. Uh, for instance, the issue of quality of output from the BDSPs we didn't know, we didn't have, so we couldn't measure it. In terms of standard, we also did not have a standard, uh, so there's no benchmark if, whether somebody is good, super good, or not good at all. Uh, so there has to be a mechanism for even small businesses to be able to know. The development partners are optimistic that the impact of the initiative will soon be felt on the national economy. Nigeria cannot achieve its development aspirations or meet the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, which is aimed at ending, tag, ending poverty by 1830, or even farewell in the implementation of uh, Agenda 2063 of the African Union, which is all aimed at improving the living standards of Africans and Nigerians without the development of the private sector. Why this is important is the fact that a lot of entrepreneurs have been complaining that uh, the services that they're getting, uh, they're, the first and foremost, the services, they're what they're paying for, they're not getting what they're paid for. Uh, secondly, the, the quality is not assured. So, but this process, this certification process, what it does is that it certifies the BDSPs to offer standardized services to entrepreneurs. Participants share their views on the impact of the training. The impact of business development is infectious. Once an SME sees that he's doing well from what an uh, BDSP is doing for him, others will follow. They, they have this wait and see attitude. And I tell you, that's why credibility, professionalism, integrity, which the BDSP program is impacted on us, is vital. I would say that um, without a BDS intervention, no matter how much an SME has, you can't really succeed in business. Because you need that guidance, you need that mentoring, you need that hand-holding for people that will be able to help you see it outside yourself. The core focus of this program is to train competent professionals in the business development sector, while for participants, the growth of their businesses is premised on mutual relationship with regulators to grow the business ecosystem. And that shoots us right into more business news. Here's Anne Waldo. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Hello and welcome to Business News. More than 11 billion naira, that's what has been paid by Nigerian Insurers Association. By insurers were paid so far at claims for losses suffered during the NSARS protest, which occurred in October 2020. The chairman of the NIA, Gani Musa, who made this known at a brief press briefing today, put the estimated bill that the insured businesses affected during the protests across the country at about 2,000. He also mentioned that an additional 2 billion naira was paid between October 2021 and January this year. Before now, the NIA said insurance companies paid over 9 billion naira as of October 2021 
as claims for about 20 billion Naira estimated losses suffered by some businesses during the protest. Residents and business owners at the Bejuleki area of Lagos State have been advised to take advantage of the new Stambic IBTC branch within the area. Being the first in that axis, the bank has increased its number of branches to 140, seven cash centers, five e-banking outlets, and three virtual branches. It promised to cater to both banking and non-banking commercial service needs of its customers in that area and beyond. Welcome to the newest branch of the Stambic IBTC Bank in Lagos. It's not just the first, but the only bank in the entire Lagos free trade zone in the Bejuleki area of Nigeria's commercial nerve center. The site in here, according to the leadership of the bank, is in fulfillment of its corporate vision of supporting landmark projects in the country. Stambic IBTC, a member of Standard Bank Group, is proud to support landmark projects in Nigeria, which contribute to economic growth, improve infrastructural development, and ultimately create jobs for Nigerians. With its bragging right as an end-to-end -end financial institution, the bank says it's bringing here all its services, including pension, asset management, stockbroking, insurance and more a development residents and business owners find exciting it's strategy for the bank to be here because you know the, the there's no way that the flow of funds in this axis needs to move through the banking system and so for stambi kbtc to be here now clearly they are very strategic and i think um, we still expect more yeah before uh, there is no bank branch around here so all the enterprises and uh, indi individuals may need to go far, move more than one hour to reach the other bank, which is uh, in the direction of uh, Victoria Island, it is very far. This location is strategic to the bank and is expected to service both banking and non-banking commercial needs of its customers. If you check the volume of investment um, <laughs> that has been committed to this axis, whether in the context of you know, the largest you know, um, petroleum refinery that is coming up, you know, the petrochemical plant that is coming up, the free trade zones, all the economic activities and the factories and the manufacturing activities, even the deep sea port. So we just have to be here, right, in order to support, in order to also partner, and in order to see to the development of this axis in terms of economic activities. Work has started already, and there's a promise to regularly increase the solutions the branch provides and a commitment to create world-class banking solutions. The local balls closed in the red yet again. Investors are still extending sell pressure on MTN Nigeria and 19 other stocks, pushing the index lower near 46,000 points. Will Ibong tells us more. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Let's check out the reaction in the market today. Stocks fell further in today's trading session. The driver here is the drop in some banking and consumer goods stocks, which saw the NGX losing 0.31%. The sell pressure is evident on the activity chart, especially from Unilever, Boa Foods, Access Bank, and GTCO. Now, investors are still tiptoeing around GTCO since it announced its acquisition of 100% shareholding in Investment One Pension Managers. The banking sector index was not spared as it dropped by 0.17%. And as as more companies release their corporate earnings, Presco led the top gainers for today with 10 percentage points higher to close at 104 Naira 50 Kobo, closely followed by NEM Insurance and Ikeja Hotel, while Cogville Business Solutions led the decliners. Not very encouraging numbers, but as analysts have said, it's not time to throw in the towel. You know, owning a parachute does not necessarily mean that you always have to pull the ripcord. Keeping one's position could be a rational decision, especially in this earnings season. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Will Ibong. Back to you. Thanks, Will. 
Meanwhile, it's a positive close for U.S. stock markets today after investors digested another batch of corporate earnings while awaiting key inflation data later this week. But let's find out how they all fared at the close of business. And that's business news tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Wawadu. It's back to you, Millicent. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thank you, Anne. Prosecutors in Burkina Faso are calling for the country's former president, Blaise Campore, to be handed a 30-year prison sentence for his alleged complicity in the murder of revolutionary leader Thomas Sankara. Sankara was assassinated in a coup in 1987, which brought Campore to par. Former president Campore was deposed by a popular uprising in 2014, having been in par for 27 years. He then fled to neighboring Cote d'Ivoire. The former president was Sankara's close friend and denies any role in his death. Here's Simon Pusey with more international news and around the world in five. Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Canada's Prime Minister has said a protest by truckers that has paralysed the capital, Ottawa, has to stop. <laughs> Lorry drivers have been rallying against Canada's COVID vaccine rules. For nearly two weeks, hundreds of lorries have brought the city centre to a standstill, forcing many local businesses to close. On Twitter, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Canadians have the right to protest, to disagree with their government and to make their voices heard. We'll always protect that right. But let's be clear, they don't have the right to blockade our economy or our democracy or our fellow citizens' daily lives. It has to stop and want to know what the government is doing to put COVID-19 behind us. Canada's House Instead of Commons of also held an emergency debate in response to the crisis. Yesterday, an Ottawan judge ruled that the truckers must stop honking their horns for at least 10 days. The French president has met with his Ukrainian counterpart in Kiev after hours of talks with Russia's Vladimir Putin. Emmanuel Macron was met by Volodymyr Zelensky outside the presidential palace. He is hosting the French president after Mr. Macron met with Vladimir Putin in Moscow. <laughs> Mr. Putin hinted that progress had been made during his first Moscow summit with a Western leader since Russian troops massed on Ukraine's borders. However, Western powers have become increasingly concerned at the possibility of a conflict. Greece says it will tighten rules to combat violence at sports events following the killing of a 19-year-old soccer fan. It's after Alkis Kampanos was stabbed to death in the northern city of Thessaloniki. Flowers, candles, handwritten notes and yellow soccer jerseys of the Aris Soccer Club have been left at the scene where he was killed. Video has been released by police from the scene alleging to show the attackers fleeing into waiting cars on the streets that then drive away. At least nine people have been arrested and one has been charged over the killing. Two French citizens and a German national are among eight victims of a bus crash near Cancun in Mexico. According to reports, a further 28 passengers were injured in the crash on the Canton Ilkin Cancun Highway. Twelve people have been hospitalized. It's thought the bus hit a construction vehicle. Authorities are investigating the cause. The United Nations World Food Programme says 13 million people across the Horn of Africa face severe hunger because of continued drought. Failed harvests and food shortages are forcing families from their homes. The rainy season has failed three years in a row and the drought continues. Crops are ruined, livestock are dying and 13 million people in Ethiopia, Somalia and Kenya are going hungry. The WFP says immediate assistance is necessary to prevent a humanitarian crisis. Malawi's meteorological department has warned that several central and northern regions of the country could experience floods and have urged residents to remain vigilant. The Department of Climate Change and Meteorological Services forecasts that there could be more rain and thunderstorms. The general public has been advised not to go outdoors in areas during the rain. 
Malawi is still grappling with the aftermath of Tropical Storm Anna, which killed at least 32 people, caused power outages and massive destruction to property and infrastructure. And finally, a crocodile in Indonesia that had a motorcycle tyre stuck around its neck for six years has finally been freed by the help of a self-taught reptile rescuer. The crocodile had evoked sympathy from local residents who worried the tyre would eventually choke it as the reptile grew in size. A local called Tilly captured the reptile and used a small saw to finally free the animal from the tyre. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos. Thank you, Simon, and welcome to Sports News. The Nigeria Football Federation has picked March the 27th for the final leg of the FIFA World Cup playoff round between the Super Eagles and the Black Stars of Ghana at the MKO Abiola National Stadium in Abuja. The NFF confirmed the date of the reverse leg to the Confeder Confederation of African Football earlier today, with the Ghana Football Association now to confirm whether the first leg inside the Cape Coast Stadium will be on Wednesday, March the 23rd, or Thursday, March the 24th. Nigeria National League team's Bendel Insurance Football Club of Benin has secured a 50 million naira kit sponsorship deal, which, according to the Edo State government, is the highest in the history of Nigerian yes. football. During the unveiling ceremony, which was held at the government house in Benin City earlier today, the new kits for the sister team, Edo Queens, was also unveiled. And Kristen Eriksson says he knew he would play football again just two days after suffering a cardiac arrest at last year's Euro 2020 as he starts a new chapter of his career with Brentford in the English Premier League. The Denmark playmaker says that his new Premier League club was the best option to get back into playing football and that he looks forward to show that he is able to play again. And Nigeria's sole representative at the Beijing Winter Games, Samuel Ikpefan, has bowed out of the men's cross-country skiing event. Ikpefan finished with a time of 3 minutes, 9.57 seconds, to rank 73rd out of 88 participants in the men's sprint free category. And that's it on Sports News. It's back to Millicent with the wrap of the news at 10. Thank you, Victor. And the main news again. Anxiety heightens today as fuel queues built up in Lagos and Abuja, just as the Nigerian midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory authority confirmed that petrol with methanol quantity above the nation's specification was discovered in supply chain. That's news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. Have a good night. Stay safe.